Here in my great state of Michigan, we play a card game called Euchre. If you've never heard of it, don't worry about it, but we keep score with cards that were not used in the hand. A family member asked if I could make a simple scoring block. So this is my design. It's a simple block with 22 holes, two pins, and a cap to hold the pins when not in use. This part is gonna get a lot more interesting before we get done, so stick with me. And as always, we'll use a digital touch probe to orientate the part to the machine. Here's a quick shot of the tools we'll be using to make the block. We'll be kicking it off with a quarter inch three flute end mill from Lakeshore Carbide, hashtag not sponsored. My recipe for this cutter is 7,500 RPM with two thou feed per tooth with a 0.05 width of cut and a 0.5 depth of cut. Originally, I had not planned on making this a project video, but then the Good Idea Fairy showed up and suggested that this might be a good first project for someone just starting out. And I needed one with, for myself with a Tim mod. I'm facing off the top of the part with my Superfly cutter at 2,500 RPM, 6 thou feed per tooth with a 5 thou depth of cut. I'm removing most of the material from the hole with a number 7 drill bit at 2,700 RPM at 8 inches per minute plunge rate. And finally, we'll clean up those holes with a boring operation and a two flute eighth inch end mill from Lakeshore Carbide. So have you figured out my master diabolical plan for cheating? For the engraving, I'm using a 0.05 millimeter tapered ball end mill. I prefer the ball, but that's personal a standard engraving tool will work just fine for this operation. And for the last operation, we'll put in a quick chamfer because chamfers are cool. Off camera, I flipped the part and now we're taking off the cap and we will bring the part to its final size using the Superfly. During editing, the only thing that kept going through my mind was, wow, machine porn with a money shot. My apologies. With the part reoriented in the vise, we will begin drilling a quarter inch hole a depth of two inches to allow for pin storage. We need to remove some material so that we can tap a 5 16 18 thread into the top. And we'll do that with a boring operation. And with that, the milling operation for the block is done. I'll be making the pins using the mill and a 5C collet block. These are a very useful tool and you can pick these up on Amazon for 50-60 bucks.
For the decorative grooves, I'm using a relatively cheap round keyway cutter from McMaster Car. I'm also using that same cutter to put in an undercut and a chamfer on the bottom of the part. I was very pleased with the surface finish I got using this method. Oh, and don't forget to clamp down the vise. For the cap, we'll use the same keyway cutter to cut in a groove for the threads and for some decorative work. Here I'm using a four lead thread toolpath with a very high pitch. All that's left to do is separate the part from the stock and clean up. Well, I'm not entirely unpleased with how those came out. As you can see, I also played around with a few different surface finishing strategies. This is my cheater block. The pattern of holes on the right has one less hole than the pattern on the left. To finish out the project, I add a little felt on the back side and my maker's mark. Well, that's about it. Thank you very much for your time. And if you think I'm worthy, please hit the subscribe button. I'm Tim from Last Bastion Labs, your safe space for makers.